Hello, everybody, and we are mere hours away from the launch of No Rest for the Wicked. And seeing as I cannot even think about anything else, I figured I would put together a little video to let you guys know all of the information that I found through various tweets of the devs, the Discord, and some little tips that I picked up in my 15 or so hours of playtime in that early access to the early access. <laughs> that I did part of the Wicked Inside. So first things first, what time does this come out? So it is coming out at the same time for absolutely everyone, and that is 9 a.m. Pacific on Thursday. So whatever your time is in your time zone, just convert from 9 a.m. Pacific. So if you're on the East Coast, for example, that's going to be 12 p.m. If you're in England, that's going to be 5 p.m. So just take 9 a.m. Pacific, convert it into your time zone, and that is when it's going to launch for everyone. They're not doing a rolling kind of launch date. The next thing that I want to let you guys know about is affiliate links. Now, I am not telling you you have to use one, and I'm not even saying, guys, please use my affiliate link, but I do have an affiliate link, and you can save 10% more on No Rest for the Wicked with the affiliate link. So it takes it to $31, which is nothing. <laughs> especially for this quality of game. So if you do wanna use my link and get 10% extra off, it does also support me as well. I get a certain percentage of the entire sale. I will have a link in the description that you can use. And please note that this link will not go anywhere until the game launches at 9 a.m. Pacific on Thursday. It's just how early access works on Steam. They don't really allow pre-order, pre-loading, pre-nothing. So the link doesn't do anything as of right now. But if you bookmark it or you just come back to the video and click the link that's in the description when the game is out, you can go ahead and get it through the link. The way that it works is it takes you to Private Division's website. At that point, you can then purchase the game for Steam. They will instantly give you a Steam code for No Rest for the Wicked, and then you can just play it through Steam as normal. Now, how much content can you expect in early access No Rest for the Wicked? This is a question that I've seen a lot because obviously it is not the entire game. They're gonna be adding to early access and eventually leading up to a 1.0 launch. But the devs have been taken to Twitter and they've been putting it in Discord, a bunch of information for common questions that have been asked. So they expect it to be about 25 hours for a singular playthrough. And they're just talking about going through the campaign, start to finish, and then dabbling in the Crucible, which is a little bit of their end game stuff. Now, keep in mind, I spent 15 hours in just an hour segment of this game. So this is literally just talking about if you play with one character, start to finish, and then you put it down. It's not talking about if you interact with the rune system or the housing system or crafting or building up your town. It's not taking into context any of that stuff. So if you're someone that likes to fully explore the areas, which I will recommend a little bit later and tell you why, <laughs> but if you're someone who likes to fully explore, you want to make sure that you're upgrading your town as much as you can. You wanna add as much as you can to your house and craft a bunch of weapons and armor. You are gonna get way more than 25 hours. If we do the math of one hour for me equals 15 hours, then 25 of those hours is a lot of hours. <laughs> so there's gonna be plenty of content for you to get into in this first little part of early access. And then of course we have seen the early access roadmap, which is gonna be adding multiplayer in their first update, the breach, which appears to be an entire new area in their second update. And then in their third update, they're gonna be having farming and all this other stuff. So we don't know how frequent these updates are gonna be as there's no dates on the roadmap, but I would assume that by the time you've gotten to the point where you're like, I can probably step away from No Rest for the Wicked, there's gonna be some update added to the game. Something else that I want to prepare you for for early access. As we mentioned, the first update is gonna add multiplayer. So the game is not launching right away day one into early access with multiplayer. You won't be able to do multiplayer right away. That will be added, I assume pretty shortly after. I would guess, this is just a guess, I would guess that the reason that they're not launching with multiplayer is so that the launch goes smoothly. You do have the option to play this game offline, thank God, so we're not gonna be beholden to the server gods, but I feel like adding multiplayer later, it makes a lot of sense. 
Lastly, in preparing yourself for just the launch of No Rest for the Wicked, I want to talk about PC specs. Now, there was an image that was put out by the official Twitter account that went through minimum and recommended PC specs. But the developers have come out on Twitter and in their Discord after that and said, these are actually super out of date. This is an early build before we had done a bunch of optimization. We're still going to be doing more optimization, but they have seen much better performance than what this graphic has said from their current build. So I would just keep an eye on Twitter. Maybe you want to check out some other people's graphic settings and what hardware they have to see if this game is gonna run for you. Don't forget, you can always request a refund within the first two hours if it just does not run for you at all. But just be aware of seeing those early access PC specs because they're not totally correct. It's actually really unfortunate that they put that out because the minimum specs are they're asking a lot from some people. It is also worth noting that this game, the devs have specified that currently the game is quite CPU bound. So if you have a really good CPU, but you do not have a great GPU, you're gonna be in a better state than someone who has it flipped. So keep that in mind as well, but I highly recommend just trying the game for yourself and seeing if it works. Now I'm done with preparing you guys for just getting into the game. Let me give you a little bit of advice for when you do get into the game. First things first is gonna start with character creator. The different faces that you choose have different tattoos and markings that you can pick. So for example, if I pick the face number one, they might have a tribal tattoo that takes over their entire face. If I pick face number two, they will have access to a bunch of writing that goes all over their face. If I pick number three, they'll have a bunch of different scarification stuff that you can put on your face. So there are a bunch of different options within each of the individual face options, but the options are different. So before you go and pick, oh, I think I like this face the best, just go ahead and go through all of the faces and maybe make your decision based on what tattoos you're gonna pick because that's what ended up happening for me. I picked the face initially that I just thought that I liked the best, but then upon finding that one of my favorite tattoo types in any kind of character creator was on another face, I'm gonna be going with that one for early access launch. Now let's get into the video game itself. I highly recommend that you cut down as many trees as you can, that you mine everything, that you fish everything and you dig every hole. <laughs> the reason for that is because all of these resources you are going to want to build things for your house, to craft weapons, to craft armor, to upgrade the town. And at least for me personally, I like to start with a pretty hefty storage of these things. So when I do end up getting to the town after that first boss that we've all seen, I will have a good starting foundation of materials that I can use to access the stuff that I wanna access. So you might as well, as you're walking past that tree, go ahead and cut it down. <laughs> you're gonna thank your future self later. And honestly, the animation is just really cool and it's fun to cut down trees. So why would you not do that? Highly recommend doing that. The other recommendation that I'm going to make to you is to explore every single nook and cranny everywhere on the map. I saw a lot of people when they were playing the pre early access build kind of just beeline to the boss. And because they did that, they didn't have a lot of healing available to them. They didn't have a lot of options for weapons. They didn't find any particularly cool armor. They didn't get any crafting recipes. So in the full game, you're gonna want all of this stuff. Because if you don't know the basics about the game, which I'll leave a link to in the description to a video where I go over all of that, but this game doesn't work on a Souls-like flask system for healing. It works on food and you have to find the food or cook the food to eat it. So if you get to the point where you're at a boss fight and you haven't really explored, you haven't picked up a bunch of herbs, you haven't beat every crab to death to use their carcass for nourishment, you are gonna run out of heals and then you're gonna be in the situation where you were in Demon Souls going, God damn it, I have to go and farm for heals. So highly recommend picking up everything, searching everywhere. Another reason for this is you get a lot more money if you do this. And you're gonna need money to purchase your first house when you get to the town of Sacrament. So explore everywhere, sell the things that you definitely are not gonna want. And this is gonna give you a ton of money and a great start for purchasing your house. 
You're also going to find a lot of recipes in the wild that you may miss if you do not explore everywhere. These are recipes not only just for new foods where you can combine different stuff. For example, you don't start with a way to cook fish. You have to find the recipe to cook fish. But you also find recipes for crafting new armor and new weapons, which you're going to want to do. So please explore everywhere. I mean, you don't have to. <laughs> I just think that what the devs have done with No Rest for the Wicked is they've really packed every map with so much stuff to find. There's chests everywhere. There's holes to dig that can have loot in them. We also have it confirmed that when you fish, you can fish loot, not just fish out of the ocean. So because they've packed so much inside all of these maps, you're gonna have a much more fun experience, in my opinion, if you do explore absolutely everything. And then you're gonna be set up super nice for when you get to Sacrament. Maybe you'll be able to buy a house right away, who knows, but that's, I, it's my recommendation. <laughs> now talking about recipes, another thing that I saw a lot of streamers do when I was rewatching gameplay is when they got a recipe, they just never learned the recipe. I think when they picked it up, they just kind of assumed that their character had learned it, but you actually do not know the recipe until you go into your inventory and click on it to learn the recipe. So when you get recipes, make sure you click them so you have access to them. My next recommendation is about stats. I would say personally that if you do not find yourself struggling particularly hard in the first part of the game, just wait on adding stats to your character. We don't currently know how you're going to reset your skills. We know that you will be able to, but we do not know when you'll be able to do that or how expensive it is. So if you do not find that you're having a super tough time getting across an enemy or a boss, just hold on to your stat points until you get to Sacrament and maybe see what you can craft because you might end up finding that you do actually want to go strength and not dexterity, or maybe you do really like the magic in this game. So you want to spec into intellect. So I would just say just hold on to your stat points and kind of in the same vein as that, try every weapon because generally I'm a player that likes fast, stealthy, poison kind of dex play styles. That's my jam. But because I only had the very tiny portion of the game to play with, I ended up doing a bunch of runs, picking up whatever weapons I got right away and trying them out. And I found that I love the strength weapons in this game. I love the magic in this game because you don't just sit there throwing fireballs. You actually have to engage in melee combat as well. And I really liked that. And and I also found that I do not mind fat rolling in this game. It's the first game that I've been like, huh, this isn't actually that bad. Because you get a little move where you can do the shoulder, shoulder charge thingy at them when you are fat rolling. So fat rolling is not that bad. So I highly recommend that you try every single weapon if your stat points allow you to try the weapon. See what you think, see what you like, because I guarantee you will be surprised by what you end up liking. And we know for a fact, based on what the devs have said, is that there's gonna be a hundred weapons in early access with unique move sets, unique rune special attacks. There's a lot there. And at least from what I've experienced so far, every single one of them felt incredible in their own unique way. So try out all of the stuff. I think that is gonna do it for my just prepare for launch video. I hope that you found some information here that you didn't know already. If you do want to know more just about the game, go ahead and check the link in the description. That's where I go over just battle systems, loot systems, all that stuff. If you want to watch a full run of the pre early access build that I had access to, I will have a link for that as well. Don't forget to check out the affiliate link. If you do want to save 10% off no rest for the wicked. And if you want to watch me play live, I will be streaming this game right from launch 9 a.m. Pacific, and we're going to be going all day. So come stop by Twitch if you have some time. Thank you guys so much for watching. I cannot wait for all of you to get your hands on the game and experience how beautiful it is and how incredible it feels firsthand. Enjoy your journey to sacrament. <laughs> Bye.